my hair winterizing the camper for the year. Okay, get that plug out of the hot water heater. And there it is sitting right there. Cover the heat. And I'll just kind of go over all the things that we do to winterize our camper. If you open this valve right here, let the air into the tank and it flows out better. And I think our hot water heater holds, uh, hot water tank holds uh, six gallons, so it shouldn't take too long. Yeah, it's making a mess though. And we have this uh, handy dandy little uh, blowout thing that you actually hook up to your city water city water connection. You actually just take an air hose and hook into that and then blow it out. And we're taking everything on the inside of the camper, anything that's aerosol or liquid or could possibly freeze is coming out of the camper. So like uh, vanilla, uh, bathroom sprays, anything like that come out of the camper. Now she's going to open up all the uh, valves in the sinks and then that way when I go out to blow the line, then the lines will be free of water. And this is inside of our camper right now. It's kind of a wreck. We have, um, I've made Reflectix to actually go on the windows and under the bunks because since this is a hybrid camper, uh, the ends of it fold out like a uh, pop-up camper does. But you can actually, and underneath there, you care if I can't see this right now, but uh, this is like a U-shaped dinette and it will make into a bed. Uh, the couch folds down and you make it into a bed. So if the weather is bad then you don't have to uh, actually fold the ends out. You can actually what they call turtle in. And somebody's hiding behind the door back there. But uh, the camper toe is really nice. Uh, we like it. And it's it's kind of a little more work to set up than just a regular travel trailer but it does tow real nice with my truck. So. And if anybody has a camper, they know that there's no way to keep the awning dry when it's in storage. So since we did get a cover for this this year, um, we are put the awning out so it can go ahead and dry so it's not going to be quite so mildewed. I mean, you're still going to get, probably going to have to scrub it next spring because it is still a little bit dirty up underneath there. But if there's a, if there is a job in hell for anybody, it's scrubbing an awning to clean it. And this slides out. And I have another picture of this one that's actually with the bunks out, and I'll actually post that also. And we do have an outside shower on this, so we have pulled that out and opened it up. The valves on that. This works really good if you have pets and they get like dirty, or if you uh, go swimming on a sandy beach. Uh, you go ahead and wash everything, and I actually a lot of times use it to wash dishes that are really gross. And I'm going to put it back. 20 pounds of pressure on here. You really don't need a lot. And it's, you can see it's coming out here, the hot water here. In Missouri, our winters aren't like terribly harsh. So we usually just blow out the lines and then throw some antifreeze down, uh, the antifreeze for RVs uh, down inside to kind of keep the seals moist during the winter time for the sewer and the sinks and stuff. And then that way if you've got any water in the trap you don't have to worry about that freezing. I usually leave the uh, the plug out of the hot water heater until spring, just in case there's some water in it. Because it's still gurgling, it's almost impossible to get all the water out of that. So I usually will go ahead and uh, leave the plug off of that in case any of the water does freeze. Then that way it's not going to rupture the tank. So I'll just put the plug over here. And we do put... Uh, the goop on there to seal that up and shut that off. And close that and then we'll just take this one out. And that pretty much takes care of the water outside and then I will show how we put the uh, antifreeze in the sinks inside. 
And this is what we put down the sinks into the traps and into the uh, toilet. Um, it's specifically RV antifreeze. You, some people actually run this through their lines. You could actually run the water pump and it will suck it actually through the lines. And uh, if some of this happened to be left in the water, it's not going to kill you like regular antifreeze would. It's more of a biodegradable type of stuff. And it's taken. Pour this down the traps of the sink. Pour a little bit there. Pour a little bit in this one. I hope the drain's closed. And pour some down the. Turn all the water faucets back off. Pour some down this trap. And pour some in the toilet. And I'll run a little bit of that just in case there's a little water left in the tank. But the whole idea of, like, for the bathroom here is uh, kind of keep this uh, seal moist. about a half a gallon for that so um, that pretty much does it uh, we've got the water out of the lines we've got the stuff in the trap we'll go around and wipe off the excess of that pink that splashed onto the white part of the sink and everything um, there's there's no food products in here if you have any food in there crackers any of that kind of stuff take it out don't leave it in there because mice get hungry in the winter time and they will find a way into the camper and they will get into your cupboards and uh, when it's parked, we'll actually crack these open, and there's little stops on these, so they don't shut completely. And that way, it's definitely get some air circulation in there, and you won't have to worry about mildew next spring. And we pretty much do that anytime we store it, not just over the winter. And I think that about covers everything on the inside of for right now. Um, when we, we do have a cover and we'll get the cover for that and I'll probably film us trying to put that on there and that will probably be uh, rather entertaining because this is the first year we've got it and we're not exactly sure how to put it on the camper. So stay tuned. You might get some real good laughs later. So later on. Bye.